Well, first of all, I would really um, thank you all for having me and for especially for Dr. Ronin, which um, I met him around like a couple years ago and is still really in this so well, good connection with him. I'm going to share um, my presentation with you. I'm going to talk about really so personal view, experience, and also confirm what just Mr. Absal Absalom just uh, mentioned about our society as is purely a masculine society or male society. Um, the, the the woman the woman in in Syria and also I think um, in in the Middle East they are they were they were not capable actually to just review their own opinion um, I just gave like small examples I had for example to stay in Syria for a couple of years alone. Um, in order to graduate from university and those years were really the horrifying years for me because it was so dangerous to stay there alone. It was so um, uncomfortable, not unsecure. The people, I mean, the people who doesn't know you, they are looking at you like you are really a good victim for them in order to achieve their own let me see goals so I'm, I'm just quoting it. it was really the dangerous years in my life I had it in Syria which was in Damascus and um, I just wanted to also uh, um, add some things um, about myself in order also to, to know me more better I came from um, a political family background. My father was political, my uncle was a political, political. Um, I don't know, but they have literally something in the family that they really are so contribute to, to political. Um, I have done also a bit of politics, but then in the end was for me Okay, I cannot prove my own opinion in this panel, I mean, as a political person. Um, I started journalism and I thought maybe if I'm going to be able to, to be on the screen and be on TV and just um, sharing what I'm really thinking about, Maybe the other women, they are going also to encourage through what I'm saying and then it will be a good impact or a good reflection to them. I never thought that it's going to be a revolution or let me say after the civil war in Syria. So I thought journalism is the perfect things for me in order to, um, as I mentioned, just share what I really feel about the women and what they had to do in our society. Um, I really get inspired from my father and black women. Um, in Syria, we were, we had only actually ability to maybe read about other women or see them on television. For example, um, I wrote about um, Harriet and Harriet, um, Harriet, um, no, Harriet Davis. I wrote about, or I saw actually uh, Oprah Winfrey how she hosting her show and trying to bring those women who really had difficulties in their life and just share it to the all people around the world in order to see or show how could or or how this woman suffered and how just she dealing with it right now um that was for sure a huge inspired for me in order to continue 
my my just my way as I thought and then the the revolution just occurred I mean happened and in 2011 um, in June we were in, in a town it's a, an area I'm going to say it, it's a it's really not open area the the women just can be free and just wear what they really want to wear it's just a bit conservative um the people there they wear at the beginning just scared scared we just wanted that somebody go out and just chant for something or for freedom what we are looking for we were looking for and still actually and then in order to encourage us to get in it as well too and then also believe ourselves so the first the first time we went really on the streets this was at the 23rd of june and it was so so good feelings that you went out the streets and you shared something you wanted to do something there was something you wanted just to put it out and you done it and after that you you've done it just a couple of times and then after that we just discovered that well no it's not it's not the good ground for women to chant for freedom as well to just like men we saw how the regime arrested women children's men kill women and children men they don't care about if they are really women or children or men are their aim is only to shut up our mouth and um that was really horrifying i'm still right now shaking because i can't remember that and i think i will never also forget it um then we said okay it's quite dangerous to go out again so we are not able to do this anymore and then we saw that there was few women went on the uh, on the demonstration or actually there were no more especially after we watched the tv how the women or also not only watching but also hearing from the neighbors how they abusing or assaulting the women in the front of the family also so it's it's just something that that it's going just to remember me that the woman was really so depressed there she was actually just like not existing in our society she was she was nothing there and um after the revolution just begun and then we saw we we, we just thought okay it's not really the perfect place here anymore we need to move we have to go we cannot stay here if we stay we are going to die so we went we went out, we went through a couple countries in order to find a perfect place for ourselves. So the first thing was Turkey and then from Turkey to Europe. But this journey is also another story. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go deep, but I'm going just to say that the women were really not able to express them all view before the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring gave them ability in order to express themselves a bit 
not too much, but I'm just talking about myself and about <laughs> the women I um they were really a bond forced to obey the man, whatever was her husband, father or brother, or even uncles. Um they were almost as I mentioned not existence here yeah, and this is also for the, the Kurdish women, it's not only for the Syrian, I mean the Arabs or the others. Um, they they had to think a lot about they say something or even if they say something, they're going to be just I mean it's it's the the, the, the masculine person's going to um, prevent her to, to say something or even to express her own view. Um, I just wanted to show you the picture where I just lived <laughs> here. Uh, it was really in the building here. And so you can see that the people can just go out from the both side and this was um, a friend of mine who just take, took the picture and he's dead right now. Um, that was in the 22, 22, 2011 in our area, Tel Damascus. Um, I had to stay, as I mentioned, for a couple years in Syria in order to graduate from the university and I had to stay alone there. But the anxiety and horror there, it was unbelievable. I'm talking about it right now, but I think you will not get it because it's something you never saw it, maybe, or maybe some some, some persons already have just um, lived this experience as well too. So the decision that that battlefield area or, or or that area was really not a comfortable zone for, for the women. Um, here are some women's men. Um, I worked with them and uh, we, we tried to relieve ourselves for at the beginning and then we had hard and difficulties let me say barriers in, in Turkey and other countries. Um, it was not hard to lead a young generation because the most of us were lost. We were not sure what I'm, we are going to do. But we never, we never missed this feeling that we have to do something. We have to do something, we are free, we can do something. Here we tried to collect a huge amount from students in, in, in Turkey in order to um, in order to get them in the universities. And I'm just going to say something so it's it's really funny. So our goals was that we're going to get them in the universities and try to provide them with scholarships, but how we collect the students it was so funny. So we we went on the streets. So, so if somebody just talk Kurdish or Arabic or other language we can, we would just ask the person, hey, are you looking or seeking for just continue your education or something like that? And if they say yes, then we're going to keep in touch and try to get him to the university. So this was that we are free, we can do anything we want. Nobody going to judge us because we are women. But we're going to do really what we really want to do and why not? And that was in 2012 till 2015. And after that, in 2016, I came to Europe and it's quite similar that we heard that the women 
in our society, they are really unshown. I mean, well, it's, it's really not common that we hear about the woman, she have done this or she done that, or just um, applauding for her achievements. But a person who really um, helped me to get my own achievements and my own goals. He's Sia Manhajo, which is the chairman of, of, of the, the party, which Absalom is um, actually um, in it. He was the person who showed me that you have to do this if you would like to, or if you want to, just do it. I'm going to support you. I'm going to do this for you. Try to be yourself. Try to help other women if you want to. But then you have also to tell them that do something which is not reflecting you like later in, in a bad way. So it was really so, um, let me say, if a hard phase for me to, to skip everything I saw I live and trying to just um, concentrate about the women and how I'm going to help them. The pictures here, for example, this one, uh, it's, um, it's a project I just um, wrote it with Lucia Manhadu, it's about the, the females, I mean, the women in Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, we thought about a project, how we're going to um, support them. We are going to support them in a way that they also feel that they have done something. So we thought about Kurdish Globus. I don't know if you know, we have like a no rose day, it's a 21st of uh, March. All the Kurds and also the Persian, they celebrate with the no rose. So we thought this will be maybe a good project for them if we're going to collect money from them here, for them here, and then sending to them those money, they're going to, um, they're going to just make press or whatever they are able to and then just sending them to us, we're going to sell them and just refund them with those um, um, amount as well too. So that was really so beautiful project that I felt it's not only me, however, all the women who they were contribute in this project they were really happy because they done something. They had this feeling we achieved something without our means or without even to take the permission that they allow us or not. So what I'm trying to say that the Arab Springs had really a huge impact on the women. It's changed me, and for sure it's changed all those women in the pictures as well, too. Thank you so much. <laughs>